Welcome to June 13th, 2023. City Council meeting. Roll call, please. Mayor Webb. Here. Mayor Cortez Armando. Yes, ma'am. Council Member Lapiro. Here. Council Member Sullivan. Here. Uh, approval of the revised agenda, please. I move approval of the agenda as revised, but with notating that number 13 is revised and number 14 is not. Support. Any more discussion? Dissension? We have, we have an agenda. Special presentation proclamation commemorating Juneteenth. Mr. Klobuchar? Okay. Or do you, would you no, like to read I've it? got one. Okay. Oh, what? I might need her. Glasses. City of Hazel Park proclamation commemorating Juneteenth. Whereas Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the abolition of slavery in America, having originated following the emancipation of Galveston, Texas on June 19, 1865. And whereas on that date, the Union Army arrived in Galveston and brought news of the Emancipation Proclamation to enslaved African Americans living there who celebrated through feasting, prayer, song, and dance. And whereas the following year saw the first official Juneteenth celebrations take place in Texas, and the tradition soon spread throughout the United States to become an annual social and educational event that it is today. And whereas, enshrined as a federal holiday in 2021, Juneteenth continues to provide an opportunity to promote and cultivate knowledge and appreciation of African American history and culture. And whereas, it is important to reaffirm a national commitment to justice and equality. And whereas, it was in the spirit of these ideals that the city of Hazel Park adopted a human rights ordinance in 2021 that recognized the inherent dignity and equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family and sought to prevent discrimination based on physical, mental, demographic, and or ideological differences. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Hazel Park does hereby commemorate June 19th, 2023 as Juneteenth and calls on individuals and organizations to condemn all forms of prejudice and celebrate our treasured ideals of liberty and equality. Furthermore, in recognition of Juneteenth, 2023, there will be a flag raising ceremony on Monday, June 19th at 12 p.m. at the Salute to Heroes Memorial Courtyard located at the Hazel Park City Hall. So move. Uh, open to civic announcements. Any civic announcements from the public? Any civic announcements from the City Council? Flag raising ceremony, Monday, 12 noon, at the Salute to Heroes Memorial, at Hazel town. Park City Hall. 12 we'll be out of town. Okay. When? Monday? Monday. June 19th. June 19th. I'll be there. Just stop by if you're in town. I know uh, yeah. Andy Lakiro is out of town. The, the, um, the Hazel Park Arts Council is um, participating in um, a, uh, sorry, we've created um, a scholarship opportunity through the Hazel Park Arts Council in celebration of Juneteenth. Um, applications will be available on the uh, website, which is www.hpart.org. And um, it's open to all Ferndale and Hazel Park enrolled high school students, uh, juniors and seniors. And applications start June 19th, and they close July 19th. And then the presentation of the two $1,000 scholarships will be at the Hazel Park Art Fair in August. That's my announcement. Okay. Any other civic announcements? Seeing none, public discussion. Any public discussion from anybody in the audience want to come up and talk now? Come on up. Name and, name and address for the record, please. Hi, uh, Patrick Miyamoto, 103 East Coy Avenue. Uh, I was hoping to get an update on the John R. Road diet. Doing it at this point, aren't we, Mr. Yeah, I mean, we're we're hopeful uh, that we'll be able to make something happen. Obviously, we've had uh, delays forced upon us by the state of Michigan and their I-75 project that is running much later. But I 
we're actually in discussions, and I'm looking at Tom and James over there of maybe trying to make something happen as early as uh, next month with this. But again, subject to what's happening with MDOT, MDOT's now shutting down a section that, of the uh, service drive for a period that, of time. Every other road is so we're not going. We're not going to be shutting down. John R. for that uh, festival with Eastern Palace because of that. So, again, it is in the works, and uh, we have the uh, we have the funding set. It's just a matter of getting that window of opportunity to make it happen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, man. Any other public discussion? Actually, can I just <laughs> ask you a question? <laughs> um, close public can. discussion. Okay, yeah. uh, what happened with that? Um, the festival and MDOT and John R. Okay, well, we were able to, I think, shrink a little bit of the footprint of that festival. First, it was going to be very uh, difficult for us, almost impossible for us to shut down John R. that weekend because they're also shutting down a section of the service drive as well. So that there was very difficult to reroute traffic. And then the uh, marijuana component of the festival uh, decided to pull out. So they're still going to have uh, a festival at Eastern Palace. We're going to only be shutting that one section of uh, Madge Road down. We have to shut another road for parking uh, assistance there, but we think we should be able to be all right with the existing parking we've got there. So we're continuing to look at and meet with the organizers to see how this is going to be configured. But that's the update for the community in a nutshell. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, I forgot to write that down as part of my comments to update the city, but uh, it's going to be a little smaller footprint, which will, you know, again, facilitate traffic because, you know, unfortunately, Woodward is under construction. Yeah, the Quinder was under construction. I think they've uh, sped through that uh, Eight rather miles quickly. Down to one lane. Eight miles down to one lane. It With really, the service drive being closed, well, it's just it's it, there's right, uh, right again, and this is why it's it's very so, difficult for us to, to get that that window to make this happen, and we want to make it happen so we don't lose the funding that we've got. So uh, again, and I'm hopeful that. It, you know, when we do it, there'll be widespread public support for the initiative. Yep. Any other comments? All right, moves us to uh, approval, approval of the consent agenda one through 16. A motion to do that? Move approval of the consent agenda items one through 16, and I'm particularly excited about the renderings uh, from consent agenda number nine. Okay. Support. <coughs> support. Now we can have discussion on number nine. You want to talk about it? i just saying it looks awesome. I don't know if people have had the opportunity to look at the uh, community meetings based uh, proposed budget and renderings from Jared, um, but it looks absolutely fantastic. It looks like a, the overall amount like slightly exceeds what we had originally allocated or planned to receive from the grant, but I think that's uh, small potatoes compared to how remarkable this is going to be for the community. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I want to know if we're going to be able to participate in MML for the uh, community project. Can we enter this? <laughs> I've entered a community project before. Because it's pretty right rad. Before you uh, were on, and it was, uh, you know, Andy's making the face, and the mayor's making the face, and Did literally we, we were the runner-up one year by literally three or four votes. Right. So for our, on our uh, revitalization plan, it's a big undertaking, okay? And again, we're not there yet. I think when we actually have something that's done, I think we would have it. it. That's right. Just keep it on the radar. So, I, saw, I saw this, and the first thing I thought was community project, MML. Well, like, this is fantastic. It's, it's a great idea. idea. Especially if we make sure that we really document the current right. and we Condition. have before and after. Are you kidding me? Like... I'm sure Jared's got his eye on it. And he's, like I said. The uh, amount of work he's, he's done on this is just killer. I've got, I'm looking over there and sitting right there in a row, I've got Jared, Serene, and Jimmy. And we had a grant meeting earlier, uh, late last week actually, where we went over all the grants that they're working on. And there really is a lot of stuff in 
uh, in process right. here that we're trying to juggle here. So uh, we've got literally, like, we have more grants than we have really capacity to manage at this point. Hmm. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll get through them. Some of them don't have to be built immediately. We have some of them we have years before the money needs to be spent with the two federal grants. Uh, James is working on the pop-up Hazel Park, and uh, you know he's got the other ones. Uh, you know, it's Serene has how many do you have? Right, she's got multiple grants from Oakland County. The Spark Grant, which is number uh, fifteen, mm -hmm. would be applicable to additional funding for the full barn. Right, so we're trying to we're trying to apply for more money to try and uh, Number come up with the match there uh, that we have because obviously the original amount of money that was uh, uh, you know appropriated through uh, former Congressman uh, Andy Levin's uh, bill isn't going to cover the whole cost of that project due to inflation. So we're looking for other grant opportunities to help us with that and my staff is thinking about that and they're applying right and left. So. Uh, we're, we're always trying to find uh, additional money so our taxpayers don't have to foot the bill. Okay. That's awesome. Any, any other comments on anything through 1 through 16? Besides Tom, Kevin, Chuck, rebuild a new motor for the stump machine. <laughs> um, anything else? None. And we have a change in the licensing application on number 16, I believe. Let me guess, I didn't read that one yet. Changing the licensing application on number 16. No, that's just opening it up. Yeah, it's not a change, it's just opening it up. Opening it up, yeah. So we can, okay. All right. Motion is had, support, any more discussion, dissension? All 16 goes. Mm -hmm. okay. Goes to administrative reports, seeing none, unless the administration wants to bring something up. <clears throat> no, old boards commissions to make the appointment of Sharon Ambrosky and Brian Lane to the Main Street Hazel Park. So move, and old business, none, new business, anybody? Anyone, going once, going twice? Just happy to be here. I don't think anything else. I'd like to uh, see if we can talk to DDA about well, next time we have the meeting about getting a DDA lot in the south end of town, if it's feasible. We'll take a look and see if we can find maybe a small piece of property to balance the scales of DDA lots throughout our city so we can have better business avenues and walkable areas. We can look for at parking. that and see what we got. Okay. And communications from the department heads. Any department heads wishing to talk? Bring up anything? Seeing none. Uh, motion, communications from city attorney. Amanda? No, thank you. Thank you for coming. City manager. <laughs> Again, Michigan System of Municipal Finance, although it's fundamentally broken, we are doing the best that we can uh, to make sure that we're providing services to our residents. I had a chance to speak with, uh, you know, uh, the city manager of uh, Berkeley, and uh, you know they unfortunately attempted to do a Headley override, and it failed, and that's going to have serious uh, financial consequences for that city. So, uh, yep. you know, so three hundred thousand shortage. It uh, they're going to have to make some cuts there again because. The, I, I keep saying this, and everyone thinks that you know I'm I, I'm like a broken record, and it'll probably be on my tombstone. But the whole system is broken. It doesn't provide adequate funding for any city. Uh, Berkeley's obviously a little richer per capita than we are, and they're struggling. So we made the decisions we made, and thankfully the residents backed us up and passed what we asked them to pass several years ago, so that we could have adequate funding. And even again with that, it's always difficult to try and make ends meet every year. So 
Uh, these grants are not general fund monies. They're used for specific things and they have to be used for specific things. And the city council has no authority whatsoever to reallocate that money for any other purpose. And we wanna make sure that we get the best value for that. So sometimes it actually costs us a little bit from the general fund, but I believe that it's well worth it in the long run when we're able to deliver uh, good things for our community. So I'll say that uh, I want to praise uh, the Hazel Park Police Department and the Hazel Park Fire Department uh, for the outstanding work uh, that all of our uh, police officers and reserve officers uh, did during the festival. Uh, we did quite well. We almost made uh, exactly what uh, we did the previous year from the carnival itself. We haven't worked out all of the expenses yet, but uh, again, it was a, a very safe uh, environment after unfortunately multiple festivals around the Metro Detroit area had to be canceled because of unruly behavior. Uh, we were able to successfully conduct our Festival. So I will thank the Hazel Park Police. I will thank uh, the city of Ferndale for sending us a couple of their reserve officers and Oakland County for sending us both regular and reserve deputies uh, to help us uh, patrol the event. It was uh, truly well policed. And uh, again, my, uh, my hat's off to all of them for the fine job that they did. And also to Serene and the recreation staff for all of their hard work in putting this on. And to Tom Jones and DPW for the extra work they did in installing the fencing around the area, which certainly added to the safety and security of the whole event. We're going to be looking at the event, seeing what we can do next year. Uh, to uh, make it more family and resident friendly, and uh, what well, at the same time making sure that we balance needs for uh, safety, and we'll also be meeting with uh, several community groups regarding the future of the beer tent. I want to thank Mayor Webb uh, for convening those groups right away right. to try to, set up next week. to make sure. And if I can be there, I'll be there as well. Try to make sure that that survives, and we're going to look at how we admit people to that. It's a work in progress, it really is. It's a lot of work, it really is. It's a lot of work for the recreation staff, and it became a lot of work for DPW. I mean, we were we were all out there. Amanda had her own police hat, and she was out there, and we gave her a hat, and she was there. And uh, really, it was literally uh, all hands on deck. And, uh, you know, everybody was uh, did a great job, and uh, I'm very pleased with uh, how everything turned out. Right. So, uh, thank you all. Thank Stay you. dry. Councilman LaCuro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and all the hard work that uh, goes into running our meetings um, and just make it real quick, thank for being a short meeting. If you love somebody, tell them, and if you have kids, hug them every day and tell them you love them. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Councilperson Sullivan. Um, I want to thank everybody for your patience while I had to drive through the monsoon that was happening. Um, I hope we all go home to dry basements. Um, also, I hope that our sewer system and our water system stays like a okay with these flash floods we're having. Um, I want to also thank everybody for making sure that the uh, fair was really safe this year. I have um, two friends that live directly on across from the rec center and next to the rec center, um, and they were very pleased with the way things happened this year they said they felt safer they didn't have um, they didn't have the experience that they'd had in years past and there were some pretty big concerns there so um, kudos to our rec department and our rec board that I know spent countless hours planning and discussing and uh, mitigating the risk that we had experienced in years past and then um, our first responders for being on point and keeping everybody safe um, I also want to thank the Hazel Park Fire Department for coming out to the United Oaks Carnival and getting in the dunk tank like brave soldiers they were. Uh, it was chilly, it was not warm, and they got in that dunk tank. The uh, police department was supposed to be there. They did not show up. I called out the chief. He said he apologized. Um, but we're watching you for next year, guys. And uh, I did not get in the dunk tank, but maybe next year. <laughs> 
Um, we'll hold you to that. I said maybe. I said maybe. We should mark that on the to-do list for this year. Um, the motion. <laughs> but uh, also I want to wish everybody, all the dads, uh, stepdads, all the want to be dads, all the almost dads, uh, happy Father's Day coming up this Sunday. Also, it's my mom's birthday, so happy birthday to my mom on Sunday. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that came out to our Pride flag raising celebration. Uh, this year just felt really, really different uh, than years past. Maybe it's because we have a, a good majority in Lansing that uh, values the LGBTQ community, but uh, it's, it's nice to have an event like that that just feels really, really celebratory and hopeful. Um, I received a ton of feedback about the memorial fair and on the main, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive and any negative comments were inherently cosmetic. Uh, I, I think everybody did a, a really, really wonderful job. Uh, certainly some growing pains of, as we transition to sort of like a fenced in, a little bit more uh, patrolled environment, but uh, overall I'm extremely proud of, of everybody that, uh, that did that. Um, I know she's not here, but I'd like to thank uh, Melissa Schwartz for such a wonderful walkathon. Uh, I was not out of town uh, for that, so it was nice to be able to attend and really see and um, you know just the the work that she does, raising awareness for pancreatic cancer, and um, just really uh, you know testimonial to the to the memory of her late husband uh, was really really impactful. Uh, and then finally, um, there is a city a little bit south of here, Hamtramck, which is currently having a city council meeting tonight, and they're debating whether or not uh, they should allow the pride flag to be flown. So I would just like to say to the citizens of Hamtramck, to the businesses of Hamtramck, you are welcome in Hazel Park. That's it. Okay. <laughs> you just ended so abruptly. <laughs> Sorry. I want to thank everybody for coming out this evening. I also want to say thank you to our administration and everybody that participated in coming up with a strategical plan in the wake of the threats and bullying of other fairs around town. And I think that we stand tall and show our strength for being very motivated and protecting our residents by coming up with a very constructive plan and working it out and making it the safest it's ever been, I feel. We have a lot of great comments from everybody. They felt wonderfully, thought about it. We walked through, everybody had fun. You can see the smiles in every kid's face there. It was working out great. And I'd like to say thank you for all our staff members, police department, fire department, and everyone else involved for their participation in putting together that plan. We had several conversations, uh, city manager and a couple, and Tom Jones and a couple of us over that whole thing as well. And uh, take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for coming out. Fine.